Good morning, it's Monday the 25th of April and thanks for joining us here at Atlantic Capital Markets with our usual roundup of the coming week's economic highlights. So as always, we'll start with a quick summary of the key macro data points coming up this week in the world's markets and we'll then take a look in more detail at some of the biggest stories straight afterwards. So let's get straight to it. So let's take a look at the economic numbers being issued this week. And we start today with the German IFO business climate. On Tuesday, we'll get updates on the UK public sector net borrowing and US durable goods. Wednesday, we'll get an update on inflation down in Australia and an update on the GFK German consumer confidence figures. And on Thursday, it's interest rate decision day over in Japan. And we'll get an update on inflation over in Germany and the latest GDP figures over in the US. Friday brings us an update on GDP over in Germany. And as inflation rages through most advanced economies, it's going to be interesting to get an update on Friday of the PCE price index in the US and inflation in the Eurozone. We'll be talking about the significance of the Eurozone's update at the end of the video. And the companies that we'll hear updates from this week are as follows. On Monday, we'll hear from Coca-Cola and Activation Blizzard. On Tuesday, it's HSBC's turn to release their Q1s, which we'll discuss straight after this. We'll also take a closer look at Microsoft, who will be releasing their Q3s as well on Tuesday. Also on Tuesday, AB Foods, Alphabet and Visa. It's Lloyd's turn on Wednesday to announce their Q1s, which we'll discuss in more detail shortly. We'll also hear from GlaxoSmithKline, Meta, Ford, Boeing and Spotify. And the bank's Q1 releases continue on Thursday with Barclays. And again, we'll look at these straight after this. And Thursday continues with Sainsbury's, Whitbread, Amazon, Twitter and Intel. And finally, as tech stocks seem to be generally losing favour, Apple released their Q2 earnings, which we'll discuss afterwards. And finally on Friday, the last of the bank's reporting Q1s for the week is NatWest. And we'll wrap up this week's report taking a closer look at them too. Other than that, Friday brings us updates from AstraZeneca, Chevron and ExxonMobil. Well, this week is set to be a big week, both on the macro data front and as earnings come through at a great pace. Inflation and GDP data from both the Eurozone and the US are expected. Furthermore, earnings season ramps up a gear this week with big tech and UK banks due to report. French presidential elections were held over the weekend and the latest developments in Ukraine will also, of course, remain in focus. So let's take a look at all those stories highlighted earlier in detail. HSBC is due to report Q1 earnings on Tuesday, as the share price has outperformed its peers significantly across the year so far. Expectations are for HSBC to report a 4% decline in adjusted revenue to $12.7 billion, compared to the same period the year before. Meanwhile, profit after tax is expected to fall to $2.9 billion from $4.6 billion the year before, when the bank enjoyed impressive earnings growth due to the release of bad loan provisions set aside during the virus. Attention will be on rising costs that are affecting the industry as a whole and how HSBC is dealing with them. Higher interest rates could help offset at least some of the hit from surging inflation. Microsoft is set to release Q3 results after the market closes on Tuesday as well. The results come as the share price has been in a downtrend since the start of the year, although it does appear to have found a floor at $280 per share. Expectations are for Microsoft to report an 18% increase in revenue compared to the same quarter in 2021 to $49.1 billion and to post a 12% jump in diluted earnings per share to $2.19. The core cloud computing division is expected to remain the key driver of growth as businesses continue to shift operations online. Demanding is holding up despite very tough comparisons from 2021, with the expected 25% year-on-year revenue growth for this business division. The hardware part of the business could be the most vulnerable to the cost of living crisis. On Wednesday, Lloyds is due to release their Q1 results as the share price continues to trade well below its pre-virus level. 
A miss in full year 2021 profits owing to a rise in operating costs, combined with concerns over the fallout from the Eastern European conflict, sent share prices tumbling to a 12-month low. With the cost of living crisis growing, domestically focused lenders such as Lloyds are expected to feel the hit. More customers are likely to, to default, which leads to tightening lending criteria, and this means lower income from loans, despite rising interest rates. Lloyds, the owner of Halifax, the country's largest mortgage lender, benefited from rising house prices after the virus and could see a deterioration in the outlook for the mortgage business as the cost of living crisis increases. Pre-tax profits at Lloyds could fall by around 18% to £1.5 billion, despite net interest income rising 10% to £3.01 million. Comparisons will also be tough given the release of bad loan reserves last year. On Thursday, it's the turn of Barclays to release their Q1 results, and the bank is likely to follow its US peers, revealing lower profits owing to a dropping trading activity, less deal-making due to the uncertainty created by the Eastern European conflict, and a worsening economic outlook overall. Now, The investment banking boom of last year appears, appears to be over for now, as firms hold back on raising money from the market and mergers and acquisitions. The results will also be hit by an error recently discovered in the US arm, whereby the bank mistakenly sold £12 billion more in financial products in the US in 2019 than it had permission to do so. Well, this error could cost the bank as much as £450 million, which will of course hit profits hard and brings increased scrutiny from regulators and investors. Well, expectations are for Barclays to report a 2.8% decline in income to £5.7 billion and pre-tax profits to plunge almost 40% to £1.5 billion. Also on Thursday, Apple are due to report Q2 earnings after the close and does so as the share price trades down 7% so far this month, with tech stocks falling out of favour in an environment of rising interest rate expectations. Well, Wall Street expects to see its revenue around $94 billion and earnings per share of $1.43. The revenue would be up slightly from the previous quarter, but faces tough comparisons from the virus boost seen in the previous year. Supply chain issues and component shortages will continue to be a focus, although supply chains are expected to be less constrained in this quarter. Demand for the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro and Mac are expected to remain strong, overshadowing weaker demand for wearables and iPads. Friday brings us an update on inflation in the Eurozone. Well, inflation rose to a record high of 7.4% year on year in March. Yet the ECB maintained its dovish stance at the last meeting. However, since then, several ECB policymakers have adopted a more hawkish stance, including Vice President Luis de Guindos. Well, the hawkish calls from the ECB are likely to grow louder, especially if CPI and particularly core CPI, which was at 2.9%, continues to rise, similarly as it has done in the UK and the US. Should inflation push over 7.4% in March, then expectations for a July rate hike could increase, boosting the euro. So, of course, do therefore keep an eye on the euro. And to wrap up the week's banking announcements, NatWest is due to report their Q Q1 earnings on Friday. Well, like its peers, the NatWest share price tumbled to a one-year low in March on fears over the fallout of the Eastern European conflict before rebounding modestly. However, the rising cost of living and concerns over the UK tipping into a recession, in addition to an expected cooling of the housing market, means that the outlook for the bank over the rest of the year is darkening, even as interest rates rise. Total income is expected to rise 2.9% year-on-year to £2.7 billion. The investor returns plan will, of course, be in focus, and investors will also be keen to see whether the bank believes it can still cut costs by 3% this year. So those were the big stories in detail. Let's wrap up with a look at the dividends due this week. In the FTSE 100, we'll hear from RELX, Reckitt Benkissa, St. James Place, Rightmove and London Stock Exchange and Fresnillo. And in the FTSE 250, Drax, Morgan Sindel, Derwent London, Tymon, Coates Group and 4imprint Group. 
so there you have it, a big banking week. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any of our regular videos. Also, as a reminder that if you haven't done so already, please do download our app. Why not give it a try and make sure you receive all the latest up-to-date financial news and of course our award-winning trading signals. So until next time, from all of us here at Atlantic Capital Markets, have yourself a great week.